Hi everyone, it's Chloe from Chloe's Creative Cards and today I've got a brand new project to share with you all using our new Frosty Christmas collection. So this gorgeous card is made using the new Baby Owls stamp set, the um, circle frames, the snowflake circle frames dies, the gorgeous new Frosty Christmas paper pad and of course we're going to be using some sparklicious glitter on there too. Oh and the little new snowflake sentiment. So this is a fab project that you're going to be able to create at home. I'm going to talk you through how I've coloured in this image and how we make up the base card as well. So let's get started. As always, all of the materials that I'm using are listed in the description below. So please do have a little look in there and you can shop them all online at www.chloescreativecards.co.uk. Okay then, so I'm just starting off with a piece of Crafter's Companion um, Nina card. So this is a really nice card for colouring in with your alcohol pens on. I'm going to use a Versafine Claire ink pad and the colour that I'm using is called Morning Mist. We're going to take our stamp, I've got this mounted onto my large acrylic block. Again, these acrylic blocks are all available from the website and they are absolutely fabulous. They're really nice and thin, so when you've got a large image like this, it makes the stamping really easy. So we're just going to take our ink pad, we're going to ink up our stamp like so. Lots of light tapping all over the image, and I really like stamping this image in grey. I just think it looks a little bit softer. We're then going to take our piece of card, we're going to place that down and press. So you want to keep one hand on the stamp and use the other one to press over the image like so and then we're going to lift that up off the project and there we go and you can see we've got a beautiful crisp stamped image i like to emboss my images as well so i'm going to take some wow clear gloss super fine embossing powder and while that ink's still wet i'm going to sprinkle this over tap away the excess that's going to go straight back into the jar And then we're going to heat this up. So to heat this up, we're just going to hold our heat gun still. As soon as we see that embossing powder start to melt and change, we're just going to move the heat gun over the image. Like so. So I'm just working my way around heating up this lovely image of these cute little baby owls. Right, so, and you can see how fabulous that then looks. So next, we're going to start and come in with some alcohol markers. So the alcohol markers that I'm using are Copics. You could use any that you've already got at home. I will reference the colours that I'm using as well as we go along and colour in. So I always like to start off with colouring the branch because I always think it's nice and central, nice and easy to get going. So I'm going to start with a darker brown. So the one that I'm using is Burnt Umber. And I'm going to start off by just colouring in just along the top of the branch, like so. So this is where it might be a little bit darker, where there might be a little bit of shadow. Of course, where you've got your little owl sat on there. I'm just gonna go lightly in and color that. Then I'm gonna take a slightly lighter color. This one is called sepia, actually. I'm gonna go back in with that burnt umber, just a little bit along the bottom. So it's then gonna give us like a rounded shape to the branch. So we're just going like this, a little bit more along the bottom. Okay, and then we're going to go in with this lovely sepia colour. And we're literally just going to scribble over and just blend that colour in. Like so. I'm going to go a little bit past the edge of that branch there because that'll just then give me a little bit of space for when we come to die cut this with an oval. So we're going to colour this in, like so, just working our way around. Come on. A 
some of this French in a little bit lighter at the front. And this bit here. Like so. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm going to colour in this little branch here as well. And colour in this little one here. So again, that's still using that sepia marker. And then we're going to start and colour in our little baby owls. So to start with, I like to put a light colour down all over the image. So the colour that I'm using to do that is called Soft Sun. Literally just going to scribble over my image and add the colour onto there. I'm not too worried about how it's looking at the moment. I just want to get a little bit of colour onto the image like so. And then we can start to go in and, and blend it a little bit as well. There we go. So then we're going to go in with a slightly darker colour. So I've got brick beige. And we're going to add a little bit of that in just around the edges. So this is like our mid shade. We can really kind of start to build the image up a little bit now. Around the face. Again, you don't need to be too careful. If you feel more confident, you could use watercolours or you could be using some... Um, pencils if you wanted to colour as well. I'm going to go in with the next colour now which is a little bit darker again. This one's called Shammy. I'm just doing like little flicky strokes just to start to build up that colour. I'm going to bring it down a little bit and just in a little bit more around his face. Just add in a little bit of depth and dimension into there. So, and then I'm going to go back in with that um, brick beige. And just colour that out a little bit, just to get a bit of blending going on there. So I'm trying to keep his little stomach quite light. Go back over and just blend over the image. Again, when you're at home, you can spend a little bit more time than I'm doing now. I'm going to go in with a little bit of sepia as well. Just around the edges, just to darken it down a little bit. So all I'm really doing is following the lines of my stamp. Just adding a little bit of colour onto here. Like so, you don't have to be too too precise or too careful. We just want to get a little bit of colour onto that image. I'm going to take a little bit of that brick beige again and just work over just to blend that darker shade in. Like so. And you can see how we're starting to get the depth and dimension on there. So we're going to do exactly the same with the next one in the middle. Again, I'm going to go in with that soft sun and just put a base colour down. Like so, we're just working our way around. Adding that in and then we're going to go in with a little bit of chamois. I'm just going to go straight in with the darker colour this time. So all I'm going to do is just kind of flick the colour onto the image here. Like so and you can just see how I'm just working my way around adding that colour on. Okay, and then we're going to go in with that brick beige and just start to blend it out a little bit. So I'm just going to touch between where you've got your soft sun and where you've got your chamois. 
You can kind of do little flippy strokes and it gives you like a more like kind of feather like appearance as well. What I really like about the Copics because you've got that lovely brush tip. It does make it nice and easy for when you're kind of colouring in and things. There we go. That's him getting a nice colour. I just want to blend that little bit there. Just a little bit more. Just going to go back in with the soft sun. Do a few little... little flicks like so and you can see how that's then starting to build up so then we're going to do the next little one on the end so again i'm going straight in with that soft sun Colour of the entire image, like so. And then I'm going to go in with my medium shade, which is that brick beige. I'm just kind of adding that colour into where I think it'll look best. I'm going to just share these little eyelids there. Really all we're doing is just building up the layers of colour. And then we're going to go in with that lovely chamois. And just flick a little bit of that colour. Yeah, like so and then we'll go back in with that brick beige and just blend and there we go Okay, so we'll colour the little Santa hats in next. So I'm going to do those in red. I'm just going to literally put just one colour down on these because we are going to um, glitter them anyway. So I'm just using, this is strong red. Like so. Just colouring in. Those little hats. A little bit there. Oh, and that looks fabulous. Okay, and we're gonna start with on with the foliage now. So I've picked out two greens. So I've got ocean green and I've got Nile green. We're gonna start with ocean green, which is slightly darker. And all I'm going to do is just go onto these pine branches and in like a little flicky motion, you're just going to flick the colour. Oh, I've missed colouring these little tail there on this owl. Let's just colour that in. It's obviously concentrating a lot. That one, there we go. That looks better. Okay, so I've gone in with my dark green, which was the ocean green. I'm going to go in with my Nile green. And just work over into the white areas. And you're literally just kind of flicking the colour like so. And then we're going to do exactly the same on the next part down here. Again, I'm always using that brush tip. So you're just kind of mimicking the look of those branches. 
by just working round. And just flicking the colour onto the image. Then I'm going to do and then the same down here so you can see by using the two different shades of green it gives you a nice multi-dimensional finish and you can literally just flick that colour onto there I'm going to continue to work round and do this side here working around adding that colour on. What we're then going to do is take our darker green. So this one is the ocean green again. I'm just going to go in and colour these little leaves that are on the branches. like so so we're just going to work around colouring these in like so i'm going to grab a slightly lighter green for the holly leaves and so it's this one here so this is called yellowish green that i'm using now and we're just going to go in and colour these holly leaves in. It looks quite bright, but what we're going to do is pop a little bit of a darker colour into the middle. Just to kind of darken it down a little bit. So the colour that I'm going to use to do that is I'm going to go back in with the Nile Green. And just brush that into the centre of the holly leaf. And I'm going to take my marker, my yellowish green, and just blend over just to blend it out. I'm going to take my red again to colour my little berries. Okay. And then I'm going to do the same with all of the little holly leaves that are on here. Again, just getting that base colour down. So I think I've got them all there. I'm going to brush a little bit of that dark green just into the centre. I don't know what I've done with the tip on this one. I don't know whether I've caught it when I put the lid on, but it seems a bit, bit mangled. Go back in with that yellowish green and just blend, blend that colour out. Like so. I'm going to go in with my red, not that one, that's green, Chloe. I'm going to go in with the red to do my little holly berries. Like so. And then I'm going to take, hmm, we'll go for this one here, which is the sepia. I'm going to colour over my little pine cones that are on here. Like so. That little section there. I'm not worrying about staining the lines because we're going to die cut it out anyway, so we don't need to stress about that. I'm going to take a little bit of yellow, so this is yellow ochre, just to do the little beaks and their little tools. Like so, beaks. There we go. It's looking 
looking all cute. And then we're going to colour in the little stockings and um, the bauble. So to do that, I've got hyacinth, light hyacinth. No, not light hyacinth. Light hydrangea. Colour this little bauble in here. And then I've got dark blue, which is ultramarine. I'm going to colour in this little wiggly part of the bauble with this one. And I'm also going to colour in every other stripe on my little stocking here. And the heel. The little toe. And then we'll take a lighter blue, which is called Frost Blue. I'm going to colour in the gaps like so and I'm also going to colour in around there and then I'm going to take that yellow ochre again and I'm going to colour in the little bauble top there and there and I'm going to take another red this is cadmium red and I'm going to colour in the little candy cane Again, I'm just working over colouring in those little stripes. And that right there is our image all beautifully coloured in. So what we're going to do now is I've got a couple of our dies. These are from our um, basic clearing oval die set. So I'm going to take the smaller one and I'm going to pop it in, in place just over our owls nice and central there we'll just tape that down I always like to put a couple of pieces of tape on as well just to make sure that it all runs through the machine okay and doesn't move and then I've got my Gemini set up next to me so I'm going to use my base plate my plastic shim my die with my card on and I'm going to run that through my machine And then we'll grab that at the other side. And there we go. You can see how we've got that nicely cut into the oval shape now. And there we go. So if I just pop that into the middle. So now what we're going to do now is we're going to add a little bit of glitter onto here to bling it up. So I've got a few different glitters here. So again, I'm going to use my Art Glitter Dries Clear PVA glue. I'm going to start off with the red. So I'm going to do, obviously, my little holly berries in red. So tiny little dots of PVA just in the middle of those. And then we're going to do the little Santa hats as well. So I'm just going to infill those with the glue. So, and then we're going to grab our red glitter. So the glitter that I'm using is called Red Ponsettia. I'm going to sprinkle that over and tap away the excess. I forgot I'd put my glue on my little holly berries there. So I have just smudged that, but we won't stress too much. We'll just... Push it back into line like that. Okay. That's then going to go back into my jar. Like so. Next up, we're going to take Mint Crisp, which is a lovely soft green colour. Really, really pretty. So again, all I'm doing is like little flicking 
motions under the branches. I'm going to glitter up these little bits as well. And then I'm going to take my mint crisp glitter, I'm going to sprinkle it over the top. Like so, and then the remainder is going to go straight back into the jar. Then I'm going to take our glitter that's called All That Glistens. And this is like a lovely kind of snowy effect glitter. So I'm going to pop that onto the little tops and the little baubles on the Santa hash. So again, you're just going to apply your PVA into those areas like so and what i also like to do is i like to add a little bit of this onto the branch as well so to do that all you need to do is just add in just under your branch like so a little bit and we're going to sprinkle that over the top And then we're going to tap away the excess and that there would be the completed image. Okay. So we're going to pop that to one side to dry. While that's drying, we're going to work on the rest of the card. So I'm going to pop my little pin back into my glue. Okay, and I'm going to bring in my base card. I've got a piece of um, silver mirror card that I've already trimmed down to size. So I've trimmed my mirror card down to seven and three quarter inches square. I'm going to take my halal glue and just glue this down onto my base card. Like so. And then I'm going to take a piece of crystal white pearl card, which I've cut down to seven and a half inches square. Let me just check this is the right one. Yes, it is. I've got two bits of white pearl card there. I just wanted to double check I was using the right one. I'm going to take my crystallina glitter. Actually, should we go glass slipper? We'll go glass slipper instead. So this is like a really nice, fine, silvery white colour. We're going to take our chisel tip glue pen, drag that along the edge and then dunk it into the glitter. So I've got a little scoop there, could, could probably use it. There we go. So again, Glass Slipper is one of our Sparkalicious glitters and it's really nice and fine so you can stick this one with a glue pen. Sprinkle that over and tap away the excess, like so. And then we're going to take in our piece of patterned paper. This is from the Frosty Christmas foiled paper pad. And this is one of my favourite designs, this paper pad. Oh, it's absolutely gorgeous. You get so many different papers in here all with the blue, silver and white and grey theme. It's a really, really gorgeous paper pad. So I've taken this one that's from um, the Frosty Christmas paper pad. We're going to glue that down into the centre. Like so. So that's going to get stuck onto here. I'm going to lift that off. I'm going to pop some foam pads onto the back of here. So these are, of course, from our foam pads on a roll, which are fabulous. And they're really nice and easy lift. I'm going to whip the backs off these. I only have my little basket next to me. I think I've uh, just moved it to the other side of the room. 
just to throw all of my foam pad backs in. There we go. So that's then going to get stuck down onto our base card. Like so. So then for the next part, I want to show you how to create this beautiful snowflake frame. So I've got this one that I've already done. I'm going to grab in our snowflake frame die set. And this is absolutely beautiful. This is the new circular one. So there is a bit of a way to cut the, the largest one with it being so detailed. So what you want to do is take your piece of card, trim it down to 8 by 8 pop your die in the middle. And then we're going to tape it, but we're going to tape it in all four corners. A bit tape across there, across there, across there, and across there. So that's going to make sure that that die doesn't move when we run it through the machine. So what we're then going to do is take our Gemini. So again, I'm going to use my base plate, my plastic shim. I'm going to put my card with the die and run that through. We're then going to take that out and rotate it by 90 degrees. So once that's done, I'm going to lift that out. We're going to rotate that round by 90 degrees because you can see it hasn't cut perfectly on the sides and we're going to run that through again. And then I'm going to grab that at the other side when it comes out. There we go and if we just peel that away got our perfectly die cut snowflake frame now sometimes it sits a little bit snugly in your paper so you just have to give it a little little wiggle round to get it out there we go okay and that has die cut out absolutely perfectly so what you then want to do is take your little porky tool just go around and just push out all of these extra extra little pieces here like so it is honestly such it's the most beautiful die it's just gorgeous it's so nice for creating lovely mats and layers on all of your christmasy projects even for scrapbooking this would be really good as well because you could pop a photo in the middle or something like that It'd be really really lovely Gonna work our way around, pushing all of these little bits through. Please be careful of your fingers at this point as well. I'm going to go in the bin and I'm just going to do a little small section to show you what I did but I literally just took my chisel tip glue pen I just scribbled over the snowflakes and I just went right up to the edge like that like so and then I took my Get Down and Boogie Sparklicious Glitter and just sprinkled this over. Literally, you can then see how that gives you that lovely little border. So I've already got one that's dried. Back into the jar. glitter all over my worktop now i'm just going to grab a baby wipe just give this a little wipe over 
<laughs> really does get everywhere, doesn't it, when you're crafting. Okay, so we're going to take our base card. Okay, and what I also like to do is I'm going to stick that on with some foam pads. But I wanted a little pattern for the middle. So I took another piece of one of those beautiful papers. And we're going to take the next size in of the circle. And we're going to die cut that out from the middle. Now we could have done it to the side, but I actually want this lighter. So it looks like the gradient's going in over, if that makes sense. So I'm going to grab a little bit of tape and just tape this down into place. We're going to run that through the machine with the exact same plate combination. Because this isn't a very detailed die, we'll probably only need to run it through once. So I've just got my base plate, my plastic shim, my card and die, and then my cutting plate on the top. That's going to run through again. And we will just grab that when it gets to the other side. We're going to glue that down into the centre of our gorgeous little glittery frame. So just a little bit of collal glue on the back. So we're going to stick it flat and then I'm going to stick that down like so. I'm going to flip this over and grab some torn pads. Because what I sometimes like to do is I like to do like a double layer. When you've got these beautiful frames like this one, if you do a double layer of foam pads, it kind of lets the light just dance underneath and it looks so, so pretty. So let's whip the backs off those. I'm just gonna whack another one on the top to give us that double level of dimension. And we'll take the backs off of those. It's gonna go in the rubbish. We'll grab our base card back in. We're gonna pop this over the top. So I always like to make sure I've got these larger snowflakes in the corners. So that helps me with lining up. down about there so you can see how pretty that's then looking i've then taken an oval that's slightly small slightly larger sorry than the one that we used previously so i'm going to die cut out a little frame with this so i'm going to take a piece of our lapis lazuli pearl card and again i'm just going to take my die into place like so and run that through my machine so again, same plate combination as we've been using. It's going to go through the Gemini. I'm going to just mat and layer these two together. So I'm going to push a couple of foam pads on the back of here. I'm also going to foam pad it onto my card blank. So I'm going to my foam pads back in. I have just dropped them on the floor there, I have to say. <laughs> right, so we're going to pop these on the back like so and then some on the back of here. Ideally, I'd have let my little topper image dry out, but he's not quite dry yet. There we go. And we'll whip the backs off of here. It's going to go onto there. So, so you can see how pretty that then looks. We're going to add a little sentiment on here as well. So I'm going to do Sending Warm Winter Wishes. And that's from our Snowflake Sentiment set. 
So in this set, you get two dies. You get the frame and the inner. So I'm going to stamp my sentiment first. So I'm just going to use that grey ink pad again. Just got a piece of our crystal white pearl card as well. I'm going to stamp my sentiment down. And I'm just using the same grey ink pad. Take my clear gloss super fine embossing powder and pop that over the top. Go and then we'll heat that up. So I'm just going to grab in my heat gun. There we go. And then I'm going to pop my little plaque over the top. And pop that one on there. this down into place onto my card and we'll run that through our die cutting machine again so the same plate combination pop that on run that through I'm going to grab in my bit of scrap card again and grab that at the other side Push those out like so. We're then going to take our glue pen again. I'm going to drag it towards us like this, and then we're going to glitter in those little snowflakes. Grab in our glitter and sprinkle that over. So again, I'm using that Get Down and Boogie, that lovely bright silver. It's going to create that little border. And if we lift that away, there we go. Pop that back into the jar. And then we're going to use some foam pads again just to layer this up. So a couple of foam pads onto the back of our little sentiment. And you can see how you've got that lovely little stitch detailing around the border as well. So that's going to go onto there. I'm going to put another couple of foam pads onto the back. Grabbing my card. Little sentiment's going to get stuck down there. And then we are going to add in a bow. So I've just got a bow that I've tied with some ribbon that I had in my craft box. Stick that in the top corner. I'm going to add in some jewels as well from our bling box. I'm going to just We'll drill in the middle of there. I'm going to do three down here, three across the bottom and three up the side. I'm going to take some of the little smaller Diddy jewels that we've got in here. And then I'm going to take my little picker upper tool going to go just on here and then we're just going to stick these down and there we go and that would then be your completed card. So I really hope that you enjoyed this card making project. If you haven't done so already, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel or give our Facebook page a like. All of the materials that I've used are listed in the description below. You can shop them all online at www.chloesecreativecards.co.uk. Hope to see you soon. Bye.